Are you wondering if the TOGAF 10 Enterprise Architecture Framework makes sense in 2025 and beyond? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs, and I'm an enterprise architect with over 25 years experience. And I have worked with almost all of the Enterprise Architecture Frameworks, but predominantly TOGAF. I predominantly work with the TOGAF architectural development method throughout the last 25 years or so. And in today's video, I'm going to give you my perspective as an enterprise architect with decades of experience, as also someone who's coached people that are now working as architects at all the world's greatest tech companies. So let me do a quick reminder of what the framework is. The TOGAF uh, framework or the architectural development method is a series of steps to ensure that uh, we're aligning our business and technology needs. Now, it will be these steps you can consider phases where we basically start out in the preliminary phase and then the architecture vision and then we start looking at the business architecture and then the information architecture like the data architecture and the applications and we look at the technology and it's a cycle that we would follow from beginning to end. And there are a lot of strengths of using this TOGAF architectural development method, going through the TOGAF phases and to following the TOGAF enterprise architecture framework, but they do come with a cost. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the trade-offs of TOGAF 10. Now, one of the things that I love about TOGAF 10, it is a series of steps of things to do. And after solving many architectural problems that I've seen over the last few decades, many times people don't start with the executives, don't scope the architecture correctly, they don't get all the required business information, and then they have an architecture failure where the tech works, but there's no business value provided. And TOGAF aims to help prevent that from occurring. So I do like the series of steps in TOGAF. What I also love about TOGAF is it uses a common language across business and technology teams. I love that because when anytime we have a communication error because there's two different things, that's when we tend to run into a problem. So if we can communicate in the same language, that is, is a big help. And leaders tend to use TOGAF to get architects to speak on the same page. And I love that, to normalize the vocabulary. The same way physicians normalize their vocabulary when they talk about a medication, they don't use the, the, the trade name of the drug that the marketing people came up with, they talk about the chemical compound. And every medical professional in the world does that, and that way we always know which drug we're talking about. Same thing here. Now what I like about TOGAF 10 is it's very modular. It is very flexible, TOGAF 9 too, but TOGAF 10 is even better. And uh, it is really fit to be tailored and you have the ability to take something, it's very prescriptive and at least at a high level, and then you can tune and tailor that for your organization's needs. Whether you use additional frameworks as well, like an agile framework or other things along the way, this is great for that, the modularity of it. The next thing that I absolutely love about TOGAF is there are a lot of TOGAF people out there, which means it's not gonna be that hard to find someone that's familiar with uh, TOGAF and its methodologies and its vocabulary. So I think that's really a terrific thing. And uh, if uh, an organization were to follow the steps in the TOGAF architectural development method, it's gonna structure things. It'll help with roadmaps, it'll help with decisions, it'll help with portfolio. So there's a lot of good that does come from TOGAF, but not everything is perfect. And TOGAF sure does have its trade-offs as well. So let's look at some challenges with TOGAF. Well, the biggest challenge is it's not prescriptive by design. And it may say, start at the preliminary phase and then go to the architecture vision and then go to the business architecture, what have you. But it doesn't tell you how to do any of it. So if it says map out the business architecture, there's no training in TOGAF 10 at all on how to map out the business architecture. So TOGAF is great for people that are already trained as architects or working as architects, but don't expect to learn enterprise architecture from TOGAF. Now, the reality is TOGAF can be a little bit complicated when you really think about it, or at least it can feel complicated to many people. And anytime we add complexity, it can be a challenge. So we want to do what we can to facilitate it, make, ta make templates, make any kind of curation we can to make it simpler. And uh, 
the key is we kind of have to tailor it to our users more. We have to tailor it to our culture, uh, to the way we do things, which is good that it's flexible, but understand that it's not going to be out of the box the way you might necessarily need it. So there's a lot of good, a lot of good with TOGAF. So, and there's a lot of challenges that existed with Wells. So the way I see it, TOGAF is a great enterprise architecture framework. And if it maps to your organization's needs, great. If it adds too much complexity, potentially look at something else. But if it works for your organization, you can tailor it and you can tune it. Great. In reality, it really doesn't matter which framework you use. It just matters that you follow a consistent set of steps and that you're aligning your people, your processes and technology. And in today's world, probably AI agents as well. I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, TOGAF and my perspectives of TOGAF after working with it for a very long time and after being an enterprise architect for two and a half decades. Now, if you'd like to become an enterprise architect, a cloud architect, a security architect, or an AI architect, we have architecture webinars each week, usually two per week. And on these architecture webinars, I'll talk about what we do in these architecture roles. I'll talk about the skills you would need to save for an enterprise architect job versus a security architect job. And I will uh, answer any questions you may have about any of the architecture careers. You can ask me questions live. It'll be free on Zoom. You can register for these free architecture webinars in the description of this video. There'll be a link to sign up. If you've enjoyed this video on the TOGAF architectural development method, the TOGAF framework, and my perspectives of it after 25 years, uh, please give it a like and maybe subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your enterprise architecture career or security architecture career or any other architect career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now and I hope to see you soon. Take care.